What's up everyone, Justin from Make Supply here, and today's video will be a build along tutorial for making a leather drink or beer koozie. This is a free template, so make sure to uh, go to our website, which is linked in the description below, and you can download a PDF version to print out and follow along. I'll also list all the tools and ingredients we use to make this koozie. If you are interested in purchasing the acrylic template version of this uh, beer koozie template, it is also linked in that uh, blog post on our website, and it is uh, our web store and our Etsy store is also linked in the description below. All right, thanks for watching. Okay, let's uh, start with inventory for this project. Templates first. Um, like I mentioned in the introduction, this is a free PDF template. It's available in letter size or A4 size paper, just like the rest of them. Um, when you print it out, make sure it's scaled to 100%. It, this one's kind of end-to-end -end on a normal piece of paper, so you have to make sure that you're printing it out to scale. The one you get will have more measurements on it and more uh, instructions than the one you see here. So I printed mine out on a... Um, 110 pound cardstock from Staples. Uh, the template's also available in an acrylic version if you are interested. Uh, I'll discuss the template a little bit more once we get uh, started on the project. For the leather, I'm going to be using a uh, seven to eight ounce Italian horse strip. So any, you know, it's a vegetable tan leather, so any leather will be good for this uh, project, especially if it's a finished leather, uh, you know, obviously a can of beer or a can of anything else will have some moisture to it. So, honestly, a more finished leather is probably better for this project. But this is what I have, and this is what I'm going to use. Uh, I designed this template for basically a seven and a half to eight ounce leather. So, if you use something that's thicker than that, it might not fit all the way around the can. But if you use something that's a lot thinner, um, it also, it might have too much give in the cans, uh, in, the, in the koozie. So I think somewhere in the seven to eight ounce range is probably the best. Uh, for millimeter, it's roughly uh, two, let me see. So this is about 2.8 millimeters thick. So something in that range is the best option for the template as I designed it here. Okay. Uh, I will be using just a standard cork back ruler, two little binder clips to hold the uh, pieces together, number two X-Acto knife, um, C.S. Osborne scratch haul, for my thread and my needles, these are uh, double zero um, John James needles, and this is 0.8 tiger thread in the cigar color. Uh, I will be using to punch the holes, since I'm going to use the holes that are um, a part of the template, I'm just going to use this single tooth diamond chisel. So if you have, if you're going to use the holes that I marked, um, you can use your scratch all or if you want, or a single tooth. Um, chisel or just a diamond awl and you can just punch all the holes through. Or if you're not going to use the holes that I marked here, just use whatever you have. And for that I'll be using this little generic Amazon uh, mall for edges, some gum trag, uh, Dremel with a burnishing bit, Coco Bolo burnishing bit, a little piece of sandpaper for cleanup, some wax for uh, sealing the edges, a wood slicker if I need to get into some tight situations that this can't make it, and just a little modeling tool for scooping the gum trag. Uh, for my actual can, I'm going to be using this LaCroix uh, grapefruit, which is delicious. Uh, I don't know what the, uh, the rules for using alcohol on YouTube videos, especially if you're going to be using ads, so I'm just going to avoid it altogether. But obviously, all can sizes are the same. This will fit, you know, standard size or a 16 ounce. So you can do either. But uh, use beer if you want. I love Lacroix, so I will rep them today. 
Okay, so let me clear this off and uh, we'll get into the template. All right, so let's discuss the template for a minute here. This one's pretty simple. It's a one pager. Um, I have some holes marked here. These are all evenly spaced um, side to side. So if you want to use them, that's great. If not, you can use your own um, diamond chisels or whatever stitching wheel spacing. Uh, you're just going to want to cut it out around the outside. And that will be that. There's not a whole lot to this template. This is a pretty easy one. Again, I have the, this one's beat up, looks terrible, but I also have the acrylic version in stock in uh, my web store and on my Etsy shop if you're interested in purchasing this. It makes tracing and cutting a lot easier and a lot more precise. So that is available as well. Okay, so first step is just to cut out your temp um, yeah, cut out your template. So go ahead and take your ruler and your knife. You're gonna wanna go ahead and cut out cut everything out. I already did it just to save some time. Very groundbreaking as you can see. Um, and now we will be once you cut that out, we are ready to then trace it onto the leather. All right, grab your leather, whatever you're using. Like I said, I'm using this uh, Italian horse front from Cordovan.co. I will link, I'm not sure if they still sell this, but I, I will link to the, to the store um, below. They might have some if you're really interested, but pretty much just use any vegetable tan leather or any, I think a, a Chrome Excel from Horween would be great for this project. So anything that you have that's seven and a half to eight ounce would work great. Okay, I'm gonna find a nice spot here. This, the problem with these horse strips is the thickness is very uneven. So I'm gonna look for a nice spot, maybe in the middle here. And I'm just gonna trace this down. Okay, so first you're going to want to, if you're going to use the holes, you're going to want to mark the holes through the template into the leather with your scratch off. So I'm going to do that now. Do all of them before cutting and make sure it doesn't move. Okay, I went ahead and punched all the holes through, so now I'm going to trace around. Okay, so I went ahead and traced that onto the leather with my scratch all, and now we will cut it out. I like to use any straight, straight uh, sections. I always use my ruler, even if they're really small, especially something like this when these have to line up edge to edge. So I'm going to try to just straighten this line out as much as possible and then cut through the whole thing.
Okay, so now that I have both uh, sides cut straight, now it's time to work on the inside. So for sections like this where it's got this curve and these you know, really delicate parts, I like to cut the piece in half, the piece that I'm cutting, and then just work on the halves instead of trying to keep a nice straight um, curve all the way around. So that's what I'm going to do now. And then for, again, these straight sections, I'm going to use a ruler. Just make sure you don't cut all the way across and cut your uh, whole piece in half. When cutting out these um, curved corner areas, I highly uh, suggest a fresh blade if you're using something like the X-Acto or a freshly sharpened blade if you are using that type of knife. Um, it just makes the cut a lot easier to do. If it's not perfect, it's okay. Um, we can clean up a little bit with the sandpaper. Okay, <clears throat> so I went ahead and cut everything out. That's honestly probably the hardest part of the whole project, just making sure you get some nice clean cuts. I kind of messed up on this part here, so I'll try to sand it smoother. Um, from there, let's, let's do that. Let's clean up these edges a little bit before we go any further. All right, I'm going to take my sandpaper and just lightly go over these edges, try to straighten them up. The success with this project, even though it's pretty simple, is basically comes down to how even you cut your edges, because these have to match up to each other. 
and how evenly you punch the holes so that the thread keeps a nice, even, and consistent side to side. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to this one. It's not like a wallet where you have you know, a lot of layers that require precise location and all that stuff. Okay, that's good enough. Um, so as far as burnishing, um, you don't want to, normally you would bevel your edges for a normal project. So if you would like to bevel your edges, you can do the tops, you can do the curved section here, but, or the curved in the, the whole bottom, but you don't want to do the sides because these have to, when this is folded, match up to each other. And uh, if you burnish away too much of the material, they're not going to line up. So if you would like, I didn't introduce the beveling, the beveler, which I should have. So let me grab that. I'm going to use this as a um, number two beveler from, I forget. It's a real good one, though, made in, uh, made in USA. I'll, I'll link it below, but I forget off the top of my head what it's called. Ron's Tools, that's what it is, Ron's Tools. So I will bevel the top edge here. And on the other side. Flip it over. And I'll also do it uh, along the bottom here. Not on the sides though, don't bevel the sides. Again, beveling is an optional step, you don't have to do this. Okay. So now we've uh, sanded our edges, uh, beveled the parts that needed to be beveled, if you're going to do that. So now we can go ahead and finish the edges that we won't be able to access once we put it together. So that's basically all of the edges. I'm going to use some gum trag. I actually never even tested burnishing this leather, so I hope it works okay. And then my modeling tool. I'm just going to put a little bit on the edge there. Let it absorb for a second there, and then either using your wood slicker or the Dremel like I'm going to use, go ahead and burnish. All 
All right, looks good. And same on the other side. bottom. This might be a little tricky with the Dremel, um, but I'll try to get as much of it as possible. Good enough. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, if you want to go go bananas and really shine up those edges, you can repeat the process a couple times, make them look really nice, and let's go ahead and just throw some wax to seal it. Thought it had a lighter, don't know what happened to it. But well, it's okay. I'll just go ahead and use the wood slicker and just push the wax into the edges a little bit. All right, so that part was pretty quick and dirty. So, the next part will be to punch our holes, and then we'll be ready to stitch. Okay, so the next step will be to punch our holes. I'm going to just put a little piece of scrap leather under 
the table. Normally I would punch on like a concrete slab or something, but since I'm only using a single, a single chisel, uh, it won't be too big of a deal. Um, again, if you just have a scratch all, you can just use that. Honestly, you could use anything round, the screwdriver, anything to punch these holes if you don't have any of these tools. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, so went ahead and punched all the holes. Uh, punching holes with a single tooth like that is not easy. Um, it's a lot harder to keep it straight, but I find that once you get into a groove, it really lays down pretty nice. The first row I did isn't so great, but hopefully everything uh, lines up okay. So as you can see, it's gonna fold over and wrap around like that. Okay, so next step will be to start stitching. All right, home stretch, time to stitch. Um, like I mentioned before, I'm using 0.8 or 0.08, I think, 0.8, I don't remember, 0.8 um, tiger thread in the cigar color. Use whatever thread you got. It's not a really big deal here, just make sure it fits the needles that you're using and the hole size. Uh, I went ahead and threaded my needles and it'll time to stitch. So the way, this one's kind of a pain to get started, but once you get going, it's not so bad until you get to the end. Um, I'm going to use, I don't even know what the name is, I guess just a traditional X stitch. Um, you can use a baseball stitch, which looks really cool with this design, or a butt stitch. Um, there's different videos on YouTube on how to do these stitches, but I'm just going to use a crisscross Xing stitch uh, to get it done for this project. But if you want a real fancy one, do a baseball stitch. It looks really cool. Okay, so to start off, I'm going to go through the top one side, try to pull it somewhat even and then that same side come out the, from the back, back out through the front on the other side and pull it close. This part's kind of a pain. So you wanna hold these together so they're side to side, nice and even, and then even out the thread like you're tying your shoes. Okay. So at that point, try to keep it tight. You don't want too much slack in the back. All right, so I might use a clip here to try to hold this together. All right, so now I'm at, I'm at this point, so I want to take the thread and go back into the same hole. So I'm going to do kind of like a wraparound stitch on this one. 
So take the, doesn't matter what direction you go, just keep the same pattern the whole way. So I'm going to go from right into the left. Pull it tight. I'm going to go from left into the right. And then to continue, um, take the left back through that front hole again and to the right. And then same on the other side. Okay. I will probably keep that uh, clip handy. So that will be just the first stitch just to keep it together. Okay, so now this is the part where you really have to keep the same um, pattern of stitching the whole way through. Otherwise, it'll look goofy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go from right to left into the next hole. And then what you're going to do is this, the one you just went through with the left to right, it's coming out the back now. So go horizontal. Make sure to go horizontal to the parallel hole on the other side. Don't go down to the next hole. Go parallel from the back. It's hard to see the holes in this leather. Okay, so it's kind of like you just did a wrap around, and then on the other side you're going to do the same exact thing, just the other direction, from the left into the right. Go down, go down one, so it makes an X pattern, just like that, and then the same thing. Don't go, don't go down a hole. Go parallel, so there's already thread coming out of that hole. All right, and that's the pattern, and that'll be the pattern the whole way down. So what's, what it's going to look like is on the front it's going to be an X, and on the back it's going to be a straight, um, a straight parallel stitch that looks like um, I forget what the what it's technically called, but it'll just look straight across. If you want the straight across look on the outside, just do the reverse, and you get a nice like bar tack, it looks like a bar tack all the way down. Okay, so same thing, right to left, go down one. Make sure you're keeping everything straight while you're doing this and pulling it nice and snug. You don't want too much slack in this. It'll, sometimes it'll, because since it's not a saddle stitch, it'll kind of loosen itself up a little bit, so you want to make sure to keep tension on it. And then again, parallel. And then the same thing from left to right, go down one to create the X. And then parallel. Oops. So the good part about this design is that you're not gluing anything. So if you mess up, just cut your thread out or unthread it and start over. There's no glue, so you're not going to have a whole big mess. Um, just take everything out, go back, and start over. But as you can see, this is why it's important that all these holes were aligned as well as possible because you know, it's, it's a very precise um, alignment.
Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple more stitches off camera just to make it go quicker. And then once I get close to the bottom, we'll come back and revisit. Okay, so I am all the way at the end except for the last two holes there. So I wanted to do that on camera just so we can finish it off. And I'm gonna do it the same way I did up here. Just a note, uh, when measuring your thread for this project, Normally when you're doing a saddle stitch, you'll do uh, four times the length of the stitching distance that you're doing. Do a little bit more. Um, this one takes a little bit more thread to finish. And this is like the second time I've done this where I didn't, I didn't, uh, I would have made my life easier if I had some extra thread to deal with this, especially at the end where you're dealing with this part. It's kind of a pain. And now I have a very sh small amount of thread left and my needles keep falling off and everything. So just allot yourself a little bit more extra thread when measuring. It'll make your life easier at the end here. So my needles will probably be falling off as I do this, but we'll get it done. So like I said, we're at the last hole. It's gonna keep doing the same, same thing. Okay, uh, created my last X there. So now I'm going to, as you can see, my needle fell off. I'm going to finish off the um, second part where you go across, come out the front, needle fell off, and then I gotta put, <laughs> put my needle back on to do the other part. Don't be me, guys. Just give yourself some more thread. All right. Okay, so now we're both on the front here. And I'm gonna put my needle back on. Okay, and now I'm just gonna go parallel through into the back just to finish it off. Okay, and move my needles and let me get some scissors. I'm gonna cut off the spare thread. If I had a lighter, I thought I had one here. I guess I don't, but uh, you wanna burn off, you know, the little ends there. Make sure that's nice and tacked down. And you have your first side all done. Okay. Looking good. So for the second side, you're gonna do the same thing. However, it's a little trickier because as this starts to um, be completed, it gets hard to stitch this part because you don't have free rein to get in here. So what I like to do with this side is start from the bottom. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt at first, but then once you get down here, it's uh, a lot more freedom with your fingers than going like this and then trying to finish off down here where you have no room to get your hands in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my thread out. Like I said, I'm gonna take more than I normally do to avoid that situation again.
Okay, so same thing as last time. I'm just going to start from the back. In through the front, out through the back. a little trickier now. So I'm going to try to hold this still. Hmm, a little trick here. Once you get started, it's fine though. Okay, so like I did last time, I'm just going to go into the first hole to wrap around. Okay, first one done. So this one's gonna, now that the other side is stitched, it's really gonna wanna like bend when you're pulling it tight. So just make sure you're keeping it straight, edge to edge. And then again, it's just the same process. I'm gonna go in, which is a little bit more of a pain in the butt because you don't have any freedom of your fingers. Make sure to go parallel like last time. And pull it snug. Since it's a very simple stitching pattern, just make sure you just do um, whatever it is, just make sure you just repeat that same process over and over again. So if it's slightly different than the first time, it's fine. Just do it the same way every time. Okay, and like last time, I'm going to uh, just stitch it all the way down until we get to the end, and then we'll go over the end again, and then we'll be done.
Okay, so I'm down to the last stitch again. Go through one more time. So this time it's just the reverse. It started here, we ended at the front. Going to right to left. Left to right. Okay, complete the sequence. Back through parallel. All right, pull nice and snug. Now we have both coming out the front again. Go across. I gave more thread and I still almost ran out of thread. This one is really a thread, thread heavy project. And that finished that off there. So now you have both sticking out of the back. And I will cut them off. So this is the point where you should have a lighter and then you can uh, burn the threads to seal them in. And you uh, are essentially done now. You can see I didn't cut very even there, so definitely work on your cuts and make sure that they're nice and even to keep the tops even. And you can grab your, your drink, throw it in. So what I, like, what I um, suggest is if you're using a, a very uh, thick leather that's not flexible like this veg tan is, kind of work, put your um, drink in the first time and then kind of work it around the bottom like this just to make sure it's nice and flat. It'll, it'll sit nice when it's full, but once it's um, almost empty and there's not a whole lot of weight, it might tip over. So especially when it's brand new, you kind of want to just like smush it down a little bit, make sure it's nice and fitted. But once you use it a couple of times, it'll, uh, it'll sit just how you want it. And it might be a little tight getting it, especially if you're using uh, something close to the eight ounces that I was using like this is close to eight ounces It's a little tough to get it out sometimes depending on the leather, but You know if you work it in and out a couple times, it'll be fine And uh, yeah, that's uh, the end of the project. So you have yourself a nice Little drink koozie you can also put um, 16 ounce in here as long as it's the same width can It'll stick up a little bit more, but it still works fine and it's a nice little uh, project. It's a nice gift. Like uh, with all the patterns, I don't care if you sell the end. I don't care if you sell these. Um, you know, do whatever you want with them. The end product. Please don't distribute the pattern. I see them <laughs> all over the internet. I, I can't do anything about it. But it'd be awesome if uh, you didn't do that. But yeah, add them to your uh, product lineup. Give them to your friends. Good birthday present. All that good stuff. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them in the comments. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching.